Okay. All right. We on? We live? We got volume, sounds, things. Hello. How are we today? Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. To whoever you are. I'm the cartographer. I'm the cartographer. I make maps. And today, we're making maps! Slurpy slurp. Just a little bit of coffee left. And then everyone gets to see me eat a banana. Uh, start bringing the world up. Hey, hey, plastic's back. What's up, my dude? And a brush, brush, brush. Yo, not only is brushing good for your follicles, it just feels good. It feels good on your skin. It exfoliates. And the thing is, the thing is, it's not that like I don't like to brush. I love to brush my beard. Um, and just in general, most things, and I think this is comes down to my neurodivergency. Um, if I don't know where this is, I will never do it. And I will frequently misplace this throughout my life. And so, therefore, I will just go, like, a week without brushing my beard because I don't know where this is. And then, oh, I know where it is. And then I'll be like, oh, brush, 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 brush. And, like, same things. If y'all watch, you, you know, I lose my, my, my pressure mitts all the time just because I'll, I'll take them off at night or something. The kid will grab one, et cetera. Um, ooh, look at this great map. I don't want to download it, but beautiful map. We're seeing here. I bring you all over so you can see what I see. La da da da. The world as it exists. Oh, you have to actually work, and you can't just fake work. That's sad. I feel sad for you. But you can you can fake you can real work while you lurk. So we appreciate it. Um, yeah, check this out. This um, this little like horde map they got going on. I don't know if that's going to be a damn submission, a DAM submission, the challenge, which we, uh, I will be doing soon, this week. I'm waiting for today at lunchtime uh, or tomorrow for the patch to release, and then I will get the magic update, and I'll have a whole bunch of new stuff to use for uh, the map I need to make for this weekend, this Saturday. So, um, what am I doing? What am I doing? Yeah, definitely get get a Knoll encampment vibe, right? Yeah, it's definitely got the uh, the uh, the horde ish vibe to it. You know, all the for me, what makes it for me is the lighting, and it's really where DA I think plays much further than other programs I've used to make maps, right? Um, Normally, lighting is stagnant and stale um, in the resolution world, right? Like when you're making, like, on a paint canvas or on even on Photoshop, you have to do all the work and you have to do all the the texturing of colors, and it's not an actual light source. It's 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 color. Like you're you're putting color onto it to make the illusion of, like an artist would on a paint canvas, right? Um, but in Dungeon Alchemist, we get to do something way different, which is create this 3D render of a world and then put real light effects into it that do all the work of that color and texturing but in the facet of actual light sources right um, so the resolution is different you can move how you look at it and the perspective will be perfect um, you can take multiple angles of you know so on that the dark night moonlight you can see the moon in the in the in the top right of the corner where the top right of the map is a bit brighter than the top left of the map you see that that's the moon, that's the lighting of the map, right? So you have everything toned down in like this soft blue. And then all those little torches that have these little pockets of orange, right? That's just like such a good feeling. Like if you ever watch like Lord of the Rings and like you see like the orcs when they all caught, they got their torches, like that feeling, that that vibe of horde, that like um, the, the, the power of a mob, like you can, 
that feeling exists in the that picture from this far away in that small format you know like just just because of the lighting it's huge and like what's like another thing I'll, I'll just like keep geeking out on lighting while we wait for people to kind of find their seats um so like if you ever played the game valheim um it's a still beta i believe it came out a couple years ago during a pandemic um and it was a really fun beta game that I enjoy playing. It's just a survival uh, game with a Viking skin over the top. So you're these Vikings that, you know, you farm wood and stone and build tools and weapons and go fight things and have a house. It's like Minecraft, almost a survival game, right? Um, but what I loved about that game is it was a super low resolution, like almost pixelated 8-bit it's a 3d it's a 3d game like it's an open world 3d game like it is that um but just like the the, the skin of it looked like almost like if you've ever played um runescape like the updated runescape where you got really chunky faces and stuff so like the the art and the resolution of, of the art wasn't that high high grade right but they did a really good job with the lighting of their world and the generation of light in a uh, on to these low grade graphics and what it does is it creates this almost like weird nostalgia of just like this really pristine like pixelated world almost it's weird to describe how nice it looks when you play Valheim but it's it's extremely noticeable how nice the lighting makes that game that otherwise is a very simple game graphically so in the design world, I can't can't uh, support lighting any more than I, I am here today on my spiel. Yes, yeah, all those little warm pockets, a light. Ah, oh, yes. And also, like, I love the void of light, right? So how it's really dark on the edge of camp. They did a really good job with that map, I bet. Who made that? Poda Raven? Okay. So I am not making moss today. I'm going to do that as like my end project. Today we're having fun. Today we're doing Volcano Island. So I will have to... Go back and forth. This is made. This is made. This is made. This is made. Everything's made. I will have to go back and forth so I can um, get reference. Or quite possibly, maybe I will... Um, Maybe, what will I do? I can take pictures and use them as an overlay. Might be a smart move. So I guess, yeah, I should start... Start at the top. Get rid of it all. So why don't I describe what I'm doing here? So what I'm going to do is essentially you've seen several maps that I've created for this build already. Um, and now what I want to do is make a large scale representation of these maps. So I have the individual t -t 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 zoom ins, right? But now I need, how do you get to those zoom ins? How do you vision that? You could just give those slides and the DM could say those things, right? But I really wanted to go with this, like this kind of like a gamey feel uh, almost and just give the characters some more thematic and what they're looking at. And I feel like this is a very applicable method because when you sail up to an island, you're pretty much presented with a large scale picture of the island. Like you can see everything. Like there's nothing hiding unless it's on the other side of the island. <laughs> we'll get more to that later. Um, 
so it's almost like it's a very literal translation of you know if the players were on the a pirate ship and like sailed up to this island they'd they'd get this large open shot and so that's kind of what this will be it'll be like um a trimmed out picture like this where we have the observatory the mountaintop you know the graveyard the villa and the players can say hey we're gonna go to here they're gonna just click and play like you land next to the pirate ship your boat's here and maybe we could even have like a a, play, a player's boat landing area or a you are here area um or maybe we just do one shot from here and one shot from here for when the players decide to do whatever they decide to do if they want to sail to the opposite side of the island what have you they should be able to it's D, &D. it's an island you can't you're not going to say no So, and it's honestly like my best way, I think my favorite way to have secrets is to have them behind simple decisions, right? Like the player decides that, hey, you know, we're looking at the front half of this island. What's on the other side of this island? Let's explore more. That's rewarded by just saying, hey, there's a secret forest and a, and a secret tunnel over here, right? Secret tunnel! Will also could also be found by just playing the game over here, and same with the secret forest, um, which is good. But also, like at the same time, it's D D. It should be open enough to the fact. Hey, if I, we want to sail around the island, see what see what's going on. Okay, sail around the island. This is what you see, you know. So the options are there. Um, what I want to start with first here is just the ground topography topography and most of it's already kind of cut generally the way it needs to be i think i can even this out a bit yeah we are 40 by 40 so it's as big as we're gonna get at the very least i think i need to have this as low as i can have it cut on the outside and then we scale around it um, one of the things I want to do, I don't have to here, I could make this map any way, shape, or size I please, but I have been using a 40 by 40 scale for my maps, so I think I'm just going to keep the map as a 40 by 40 tile, that is, you saw I uh, moused over 40 by 40 there. Um, I don't know why, it's just my attempt to kind of create a, a starting point for myself. trying to make this very round mostly round um one two three about six one two three this one's really close that's four one two three six one two three well, more than six so it's just this side which i guess is fine this can be a little off centered we like that those are the cliffs And then we can come back a bit with this side of the island here to make my beach again. Too much. Too much. I'm 
I do the opposite and so continuously trim it. It's just this little piece here that's not even. There we are, beautiful. So it just gets cut off by this cliff. Very sharp and steep cliff. Yeah, yes, please get on the Volcano Island, yo. It's it's an island series, so essentially I have just... I've just begun kind of creating these things with my my uh, my new business partner, and we um, we came across the, this idea just kind of in happenstance, and then like you know thought about the idea of like islands and the concept of what it would mean, and we were like you know it's like, it's a very cool concept because it's very segmented, it's very um, kind of take it or leave it or. Uh, a la carte you know just what you need nothing more but everything is is there right um so if players wanted to say hey take a late siesta from their campaign um then they could play one of uh, play this island mo module and just be like oh we just we decided to you know go on a, a a trip to an island off the coast right and just so happened to be this island and then that's their new siesta campaign right and then they go back to their main campaign um if you want this to be the starting point of something, it can be. It can be the ending point of something. It, it stands alone in and of itself. And then if we make multiple island series, um, well, then, you know, players could go from one island to the next island to the next island to the next island. That could be the whole campaign. Um, so you know, just the, the ominous nature of an island in the ocean is inherent to, you know, a very applicable or approachable um, format to play I think so we liked it we thought it was a good idea so we ran it <clears throat> raise that up a bit oh this is gonna be tiny 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 right now but that's okay chill Oops, wrong button. You see what I'm doing is I'm taking my sweet time with maximum power. And you're like, cartographer, it's already flat, right? But it's not what I'm looking at. And I'm looking at is the cliff underneath it is the cliff face it doesn't it, it moves slower than everything else does I mean for good reason I think um, so just like I really want that to be a 90 degree angle see how it just keeps pushing out and pushing out and pushing out and pushing out and pushing out I'm not even moving but what that does is it fills in everything underneath it just as much as everything above it so you get this really thick cut look and then I can come back and trim it back to shape and just do this a couple times so you get your desired shape Yeah, I can just hold it over here and it's still pushing the wall up on in underneath. Let 
just trying to keep a little buffer off the edge. You see how I'm not touching the edge? I'm just going near the edge. Beautiful. So sharp. So cliff. So rock. We love it. Freaking love the tavern beats in the morning. We're jam. We are the jam. London. -a -na -na. This looks really good for what it needs to look like already, in my humble opinion. I want to build before I do any like little smoothings. I feel like everything in my head says this is just about everything it needs to be. This needs to be smoother. <clears throat> All that's gully together, I think. That's kind of how, and then this is just like. I know, it's already much better. Let's try to give it like a firmer spot where it's specifically washed out in the center. Kind of make it like a more of like a, a trench. Just give it some shape, some feel, some vibe, some texture. And then use a smooth brush to make it look like it was never there. But like you can still like just the feel is still there. That's all you need. I just need that little shoop. Looks perfect. More dirt, more mud. Too big. Uh, yeah, and a lot of this is just like a lot of stuff I just have in baked in my brain. Because I've been making these maps for so long. Like, going on, like, 100 hours on this project. So, like, I know what I should be making here. I've been, like, building up to making this. I've been really excited to make this map for a while. So I'm kind of just cruising along here. Just kind of just molding the clay. Molding the clay to how I need it. This is essentially what we're doing here. I just got to get this, this model set so that I can start putting my little figures on it. Once this is set, 
Good shape. It's getting good shape to it now, too. I like this. Um, I guess I could have a bit more beach over here. Actually, you know what I want to do, which just might be difficult. Oh, now it's really difficult. Where's my water sponge, Dungeon Alchemist? There we are. Just a little nip. Just a little nip. A little nip play. Ah! It's a little nip. That's all I'm trying to add here. Just so it protrudes. Because it's the one part that's like bothering me. Because it's just a little off my circle here. Zoop, zoop, zoop. No. Gotta get in there a little tiny, tiny, little tiny bit. lightning give me the thunder so. one three four one, two, three Three, three. One, two, three. Hmm. You know what I could do? I'm going to take a little break. And I'm going to make myself a circle. I'm going to make myself a trace overlay. Yep. I need a circle, so I'm going to stop guessing. I want to do a circle with something protruding off of it. That's what I've now decided. No.
if you know it's going to be easier to make it in. Krita. Krita will be much easier. Alright, then we go back to what we're doing. Uh, we've made our circle. We slapped down a trace overlay. Davila. Hey now, come on. What's it gotta be? A PNG? I freaking exported it. What did I export it as? Okay, I gotta go back and do it again, sadly. Oh, can you please export as a PNG? Okay, thank you. Trace overlay. There it is. Bada bing, bada boom. Now that is a circle. Go back to my overlay.
I, mean, I don't mind having things sticking off the island, but what I want is good shape. And to achieve that, I'm going to start off of this circle. So everything that's not like protruding off the circle is going to be intentional and going to be um, circular. And this is also very cool because you see how I'm using the outer ring of the, the the circle now as like my starting point. So I can measure off of that. Ah! Just want to trim this a little bit, just a hair, to make it look more even, more flowy. Uh, Fix this the way we need it to be. It's very, um, Heroescape? Is that the card game? The Blizzard card game? So I'm just kind of doing a washout here, trying to add some, some dirt, because there would be some, some added spillage, like such. So again, starting with the shape and then giving character. You don't want to just you know, just go into character right away, in my in my opinion. Sometimes you can you can get away with it, and it's it's no big deal. But for my brain and how everything kind of exists in my head, I think it's important. And I think it the the look comes out different in the end as well. So it's not something that you should just skimp on just cause. And then let's see if we can do there we go. Just some like lumpiness. And then flatten.
Looking good. Blue, blue. Um, the cave's gonna go here. I'm also not sure how I can... I know how I'm going to make the cave, because I only have, like, a couple ways to do it, but... How everything will look, we'll see. Yeah, it looks like I got a couple people join in here. See here I'm doing uh, just a great job at just cutting the same piece of clay multiple times. Um... As I am trying to just shape this thing into what I need it to be for what I need it to be. And what I need it to be... See, and this is like really where I think it's crazy how cool this program is and it looks. Like, just like this little cliff, these ledges and stuff, they look so good at this scale. Like, this program looks really good at so many different angles and scales. It's gorgeous. I love it. I was trying to get some plateauiness in here. Yeah, terraces and stuff like that just look good. looks good do that all do it all rock uh, might be a little too much looks better it's not so big smoothed in now Thank you, Plastic. I mean, it's, it's even just like, just the ground and this whole terrain, like, it just like starts to look good, right? Once it has shape and feel to it. It's why I keep referring to it as like a piece of clay. It's, it's like my virtual piece of clay. It really is. Actually, that could be perfect. Okay. Bye, save. File open. So the first thing we need to make is the g -g 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 graveyard. So we're gonna we're gonna rest the map here. I'm gonna take a five stretch here and show you what we're gonna do. So we need to make this map 
exist on that other map as best we can we're gonna try to use as many of these assets in in miniature format and we'll do a little tiny little tiny version and we'll see what happens Excuse me. Okay, be right back.
It's just me and you, plastic. It's just me and you. Cut. Actually, no, it'll probably be easier. Um, Yeah, sadly, I cannot make these things. That's bigger. Uh, I'm a, I'm a silly Billy. Abstract. What's this gonna look like? Ah, I can see most of it. Good enough for me. Okay, so we need um, a stone platform. Let's get all of our pieces. Lovely. It's just it's one of the hidden ones. This one, <laughs> literally called stone platform, not in stone platforms. Little things. There's like a bunch of little things. <laughs> um, let's see. We need this. We need. Um, our serpent piece. We need lava. Any round constructions? Nope. Stone constructions. Where is that circular thingy? Is it in stone platforms? Oh, what did I use for that? Did I use this? Big and shrunk down? I think I did. A little lava flow? Round constructions, you also got fancy with. I believe this well, probably gonna want to use the smallest well we got. Nice. Hedges. The fountain. So everything on the outside, I tried, I tried to choose things that would allow me to, anything that's an asset, I can pretty much with. Paintings, not so much, and like certain, a couple assets, that's not, that's not the case, but. 
usually the scaling allows me to get away with that. So, hmm. excuse me. Uh, I'm gonna save this. So now it's like these little. It's now that I have the shape of my clay. Like it's like these little modeling projects. So I can see how I can best model these these other maps. Grave. No, that is an, is an item. What item is this? Oh, that is the lava fountain itself. Okay. This is several of those round walls, the benches, hewn stairs, hewn stairs. Favorite that one. Uh, there wasn't one of those it's bushes, benches, and headstones. I don't think I need to do those little details. We won't see those. Okay, and I did kind of start with this one because it's, I guess, kind of easy in that regard. Hey, what's up, Nero the Bard? Thanks for the follow. Appreciate you. Okay, so I can find that font. I favorited that. Benches. Good. Uh, Volcano Island. Bro, I'm getting chilly. I put my ho hoodie on. Chile. Joop, joop. Cut. This is the font we're using. Very nice. I don't think we need that anymore. Uh, that's not how you spell bench. Also not how you spell bench. Oh, my little stony benches here. We don't have you. Okay. <clears throat> Now we do gotta do a little divot here. I remember a divot of sorts. You know what? I'm gonna try to aim for right here and bring this down a bit. That'll be my grave here. Helps an awful lot. Right there, I'll pitch it in. Two. 
Okay. And then... It's probably way deeper than it needs to be. About there, like so, and then we bring this up. Like so, smooth, undo, there we are. like that because there's a spot to get up in between there remember right there joop joop so just some spiky rocks some spiky rocks um let's see This is another thing that makes me sad. I, I don't... I don't like that Like I'm like pigeonholed into biomes. Like I don't care about biomes. As a creator, as a map maker, I don't need to have five things in a little box that say this is a jungle. Just give me the things that allow me to make the jungle. Like I really want a jungle that has a desert shore, a sand shore. No, it's not even desert, just sand. It's like just a beach. There's 100% jungles that have beaches that exist. So I gotta go back to this biome and use this biome. I think it's Badlands? And then I have to sadly remake this. That's something I forgot that I needed to do. So I might have to do this all from scratch. Blah, 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 blah. We will see what the sadness is. Water is and... Is and what? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Badlands. Badlands, yeah. And what do we get for... That's gonna have to be my mudslide. I don't get the vines. That's the only setback. Which is fine, I can work around it. Like, and it's just, like, a little weird that it's, like, the Badlands, I feel like the Badlands is serving me as a jungle better than the jungle is. Like, merely solely because there's just so few options. It's a silly, silly, it's a silly thing. No vegetation, no weather. Water, island, Badlands, elevation... I was gonna get rid of everything. The 
the sadness. And this is the real uh, reality of being a creator. You just gotta learn the hard way sometimes. Oh well. Um, let's go to Lavin 3 and just make some moss. Finish out the session. Stay. Keep things cheery. So we're back. We're back in the labyrinth and we're making some mouths. Uh, yields more XP. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> um, in the regards of like doing commission work and stuff, I would say yes. Because a lot of times there's times where things need to be done or things happen while I'm making a commission for somebody that I don't warrant they have to pay for. You know, like if I make a mistake like that for somebody's to a job that I'm working on, I'm not gonna charge them for the hour and a half I just worked on that. That's all trash and pointless and wasting for from their perspective. For me, it's learning and practice and, you know, warm up and whatever what have you. Um, but it was not an effective attempt to create that. Now if I was working on the clock for somebody, I would build have those be billable hours if I was working for a company, but not for like like a private commission that I would do for somebody off my Patreon, um, because just you you need to eat eat those those hits because pricing in commission work is just doesn't doesn't uh, equivalent the work done. So like you have to be super cute about how you go about applying your your value to your product. Super good on that corner there. We love it. One. We're going for four to f six. Four to six-ish is the goal. And really, we just put them wherever our heart, heart pleases. I'm gonna do a really big one, I think. Go in your home. Gorgeous. One, two, three. add to those. We might add some vines or something over the top.
for... Okay. Fucking mossy. One. Mm, we're jamming. There we are, one, two, three, four, five. Very different. Always different. Keep it different. Hear that plastic? We've got to keep it keep it different. <laughs> the best. I prefer it. Same is boring, different is fun.
It's a jam, by the way. I want to learn the phonetics. I like that, I like that little round, little curtsy, little doily. One, two, three, four, five in this room. Maybe another one like here, I think. One that looks the same. So in a world of, you know, we like things that look different. When you're, when, when I'm creating, I'll often, every now and then, make something look the same. Why? Because that is inherently different. If everything you have been making is different. So, it's something that I do like to do from time to time. <laughs> like, you'll see, I'll bring it up, like, when I'm doing, like, stuff in nature... Because a lot of times in nature, we're trying to do, like, random stuff, random stuff. But, like, every now and then, like, if you've been in nature, you, you see these cute little, like, formations and stuff that exist. And if you get, like, really deep into nature, there is patterns and formations that actually exist in code. And they're, like, the Fibonacci code and stuff like that. Um, like, pine cones. Pine cones are an elaborate thing. One might not think at first glance. But perspective is everything. I'm gonna do a big one here. That's as low as I can get right now. Ooh, the chimes. <laughs> that's awesome we love it we appreciate y'all was uh when i was in in chorus as a young kid there was a uh, one of my uh my peers um always always took care of the low notes for me as i was like an, an a, a tenor alto almost <laughs> So yeah, I'd struggle, but like it was nice because we just kind of you know, there was there. So in my course, I went to a really small school, so our chorus consisted of me who could sing the high parts, my good peer who could sing the low parts, and then the handful of guys who were just in chorus just cause, and they'd like, and I say that because it wasn't like they. They didn't sing well. They didn't sing. Like, they would, like, mouth words and, like, be the breathiest breath that couldn't be heard. And there's a good handful of girls that did that, too. Was, there's a, and I call these, these people just did chorus. Like, they're almost in it for the accolade 
as in like a curricular activity almost or something to do or a place to be else elsewhere than homeroom whatever it was they just did chorus but thankfully there was me and my good peer and the two of us literally carried all the male parts um and i mean like vocally like we like had to sing for like 10 people um but we we did a fair job at it One, two, three, four. Besides Baron, here, here, here. Small ones. No, not at all. I loved it. I was, I was super talented um, when it came to music, um, and I was in band, so I was like well taught. So like I knew how to read music. I, I understood music theory. Um, so chorus was really fun for me because it was way less work than being in band where you actually have to practice an instrument, which is something that is innately different than what you are or do, right, as a human being. So it requires practice. Um, but singing came really naturally to me. And not to say that you can't practice the singing, but I would have the ability. I, I remember several times, like, we would have a new sheet, sheet of music. Um, I remember one time there was the our instructor didn't show up he must have had like an off day was sick what have you um and all, i show up like five minutes late uh like senior year or something and nobody's singing and no nobody's everyone's like looking around looking at each other like what do we do we don't know what to do right um and i was like yo like like the music's here like just like let's just sing it and they're like we don't know where <laughs> and then there's like another time where they had all been practicing something and i had never seen the music and they were just like oh like here like and i just like literally just like joined in like i had been reading that music for for weeks um yeah yeah, yeah. it came very easily to me Word, that's awesome. Well, like, everybody can sing. I feel like everybody has a range. Just not everybody has the same range or control of their range. Um, so you might be able to hit a, a good handful of notes very well. It doesn't mean you can hit all the notes very well, right? Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in everybody can sing in some regard. Whether that be just, like, saying, hey, on the mic... You know, like, this can still technically qualify. I'm not talking like everybody's an Adele, right? That's not realistic, but... Uh, and I definitely feel like there's a fair amount of vocal training that helps because um, quite literally, like, our vocal cords uh, scientifically, like, have, like... They're almost like adult... Like, your teeth, like your adult teeth. Um, it's like when you get your adult teeth, like those are your teeth, you need to take care of them. Those are your teeth you're going to have for life. The vocal cords, when you are young, are very malleable and moldable and can, can do a lot of things. Um, and when we grow up and grow into our vocal cords, they start to kind of get a bit more rigid and locked into the ranges in such that they were already given or able, able to accomplish, right? So... Um, I think it's very important for vocal trainers to start as early as they can um, just to train the voice to to a point where, you know, those chords have been to places that they know. It's not, I don't believe it's impossible to retrain vocal chords later in life. It's just much harder is, is the name of the game there. So, all right, let's make myself a little palette. But I think mu the, th the thing about music is it's just like D and D. It's for everybody. It doesn't need anything to exist. It just exists. Like we can make music together. We all innately enjoy music in some regard. Um, it's something that brings people together. You can make it with people. You can make it for people. Um, it's something that we really enjoy and like to show people.
Miss Molly. Okay. Let's be organized about this so I don't get lost. We just shroomin, we just shroomin. Arm's done. On to the next. Definitely need some shrooms. I'm getting pretty quick at doing the shrooms now too. In the moss in general. So thanks for hanging out, uh, Plastic. Appreciate you. For sure, yeah, yeah, and if um, if you did did end up purchasing the program, um, and you you have any questions or anything, feel free to to ask. I could I would be more than happy to do uh, just do a walk through some things for you, um, or if you're curious about a certain way, if there's a certain type of thing you've been trying to build, and you've been struggling to find a way, maybe I figured out a way to get into it. Um, and if you're ever bored, I have a whole boatload of vods of uh similar content of projects i've done um cave tutorials castle tutorials just interior design stuff there's a lot to pick through been going for about a year now and i definitely um think this is definitely the program i'm going to be sitting on for a while a bit while more um, as I've gone about a year on the, f the first patch that they've released, and this is now the second, which is a much larger patch than the ones prior. So I am awfully excited. Fair enough, and then, I mean, once I'm done with ma my major projects, I'll definitely have a bit more time for freelance map making. Yeah, I've definitely been curious. Um, this is the one that I like for the most 
interactive map and it's really funny because like they have ai map maker on here for some strange reason as like their their tag which i believe they're changing finally um but it's like this it's not like it's not an ai map. like the ai features are so light that it's just not an ai map feature and the intended the the use of the program by the community is definitely not ai at all it's the exact opposite it's very hands-on like you see here um and to get anything, in my opinion, to look really good, apart from a few specific aesthetics that you can make pretty quickly with DA features, um, most of the maps that we like and enjoy are very much hand curated uh, on DA. If you go like on the workshop and look at stuff on Steam, and like the big, crazy, obnoxious maps are 100% hand curated, and they take a lot of time. Um, and then you have like there's like what's this other program i think it's called minor which is like a full ai like thing like the whole thing it'll it does everything for you and i'm like whoa i'm like oh that's ai you know like this is literally going to generate a world for you you know like to the point where you you aren't able to change things in a certain fashion right it generates so much that it's no longer able to be be hand tweaked it's it's literally like if you've ever used uh like an AI generator, picture generator, where you like you punch in some commands and then it gives you some options and then you can dial down. It'll be more akin to that, like literally AI, than it would be to something like this. But Magnar looks really cool because it does give the the whole world aspect. So Dungeon Alchemist, you can make battle maps very effectively, small scale stuff. However, when you start getting into more large-scale stuff, as you see on the other map I was making, um, it's a lot more items, and it's a lot of small items, assets, I should say. So it becomes a lot of work. It's very daunting really quick. Um, so I believe, in my opinion, like if you're doing a full-world thing or anything smaller than a, anything larger than like a small city, uh, you would definitely have a lot of use for something like minor which cr would, will create an entire world for you to play in um and then it's just a matter as the dungeon master just kind of adapting and adjusting to whatever that content is that's been created for you um which i don't think any dungeon master would, would bat an eye at i think that's something that that's completely understandable and fine and feasible to to do because of what you're getting you now have this whole world to play with and now and only that but the thing that we love about AI, in my opinion, is it, it is RNG. It's essentially like if I was the dungeon master and I'm here like, oh, what happens to this house and this villa uh, after the dragon attacks the city? And I just sit here and roll some dice like I did for my Daggerford campaign, which you can like go back and watch my VODs, right, on YouTube. But um, I quite literally was the computer. I quite literally, you know, I could say... AI make me a version of Daggerford that has been destroyed by Dragon's Flame and has started to rebuild. The AI would roll the dice for me, pick a swath of the, the town that it's creating, and destroy it and have part of it being rebuilt without my ability to roll dice to randomly pick, you know? So, like, there is definitely a lot of use, in my opinion, for AI. And I think Dungeon Alchemist is a good example. I think what I brought up is a good example. Um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. One. Ivy. No, uh, they don't need to be there.
It's fine. There's just a few spots that I probably will omit because they don't look absolutely perfect. And also, if I add those vines, I gotta go or the ivy. I gotta go back and add the ivy to everything else. I don't wanna do. Um, and I think it looks good enough. And yeah, let's see. Let's see if I can do. So, and this is something that my brain has been telling myself the whole time, which is very important. This is what the players will be looking at, right? This is what I believe is intended for the players to see. So those, those four mazes that we've been staring at this whole time won't be perceived by the players. Each room is going to be a room in and of itself, and, the, and it's the Dungeon Master's responsibility to fog of war each room, um... And bring them to each room. And so I think it's fine, fair, and dandy that these aren't literally 12 individual rooms. That would be wild. Um, but we have 12 rooms divided into three maps. So the players at least get to know that they are in one, two, three, and four. And they at least get to know the difference between four, four, and four, right? If you with me visually, the floors that we're going through. Right, so they'll know the difference of one floor and the other, they just don't know which floor is which. Um, so there's that light visual cue there, I think, by le like letting there be these four maps, and then say, the players come around and they go this way, then we move them into this room, right? And then they come rock walking down to here, and they're like, oh my god, this looks exactly the same, uh, what do we do now? And then they go through another portal, and then they flip. They flip down to this room, right? Or maybe they flip to this room on the second floor. Um, and then the, the last visual cue that I've given the players is this right here. So let's save this. Let's save. Because this is done. Oh, I'm getting excited to go make some food for lunch. Yeah, that's the idea, right? Oh my god, it was blowing up. It was blowing up. No, wait for the program to respond. Don't blow up. Please don't blow up. Please don't. I'll, I'll, dude, I'll be so sad if two projects that I've done today are in the waste bin. <sighs> ah, thank you. Save once more for good measure. Open map. Okay, so let's let's look at this. Look at this with me, plastic. <laughs> yeah, huzzah! So we're gonna go to Labyrinth One, and we're just gonna look at the maps from a far back perspective. Labyrinth One. Labyrinth 2. And Labyrinth 3.
Notice anything different about those three maps? Ah, no problem. That's okay. I'll leave it there. So what's different is this vent right here. The lava inside this vent, I have it like 10 foot down, 30 foot down, and like 60 foot down. So each map looks aesthetically the same, aside from the moss is all in different spots. But as we go to Labyrinth 2, say that one of the rooms brings them back up a floor. We'll come back up a floor, do a new map. And that lava gets a bit farther away. It's a bit smaller in that vent. They go up another floor. And the lava will get smaller. As they are further and further away from the center of the volcano. The smallest, little, tiniest feature, and my favorite thing about it is they're going to be confused and focused on one thing, and completely not focusing on something else. So if they see it, it's a super, super huge clue. And then, of course, why, why are we saying lava getting closer and closer? Because they're going to the center of the volcano, of course. And if they make it through the the labyrinth they make it down to the final map which is the serpent's lair where they'll travel down these stairs and acquire the amulet or cleanse the amulet or whatever they want to do Uh, I have to check my my key, so I, I want to put a secret door in here on the third floor somewhere. Thank you. I think it looks cool. I really wanted to use the lava to the, the biggest uh, uh, potential that I could. Yeah, I don't want to, yeah. I gotta go look. I gotta go look at my, my documents. Yeah, export these. We'll do that another time. But I gotta go look at my documents for the module to see if, um, where, where the actual exit is and which portal leads to where we need to go. And then I will know where I want to put my secret entrance. Oh, what's up, Mac? I just actually uh, closed Dungeon Alchemist down. <laughs> yeah, technically, I'm, I guess I'm just still technically in Dungeon Alchemist. You want to see the the project I've been working on? Still got a couple minutes. There's lots of lava. Ha, 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 ha. 
I've been trying to trying to do the earlier streams and stuff, try to sneak in before uh any of the Dungeon Alchemist streams. But uh yeah, yeah, so this is a uh, kind of like a labyrinth that I've been making. Um here we'll start. Let's do like a little tour. We'll do a mini tour of just the volcano. Yeah, I already got my applications and resumes in for the day. So the stream's done. I'll hit lunch up and then uh, some chores and, and then some free time. And then normally family. Um, it's routine at this point. Uh, so yeah, so this is the top. Uh, I believe they call this the caldera of the volcano, what have you. So essentially the top of this mountain. And this project I've been working on is um, a and d module... Uh, that exists on a volcanic island. Um, and so this is, there's a whole bunch of stuff around it. We have a villa and a, vine, a vineyard, um, a pirate ship. There's a whole bunch of stuff around this. There's an observatory if you go this way up the road. Um, but this is the main entrance, the grand entrance to the, oh, hell yeah. Um, I I've, have several projects that I have on the back burner that I've been waiting for magic. <laughs> specifically Daggerford the city um, but anyway so this is the the main entrance uh, grand entrance to the volcano where they enter in and that will lead you to the map we were just looking at which will be labyrinth one because there's three levels what's TOA Uh, yeah, so this is the labyrinth. Uh, we are going to do regular doorways. We are trying to do this, like, haunted house, like, mystery hallways, but it didn't really work in, in a physical for format. So we were like, hey, magic portals, tomb of annihilation. No, this is our of our own design. This is a, a module of our own, own design. Um, so I have one, two, three floors on the labyrinth, and those, once they figure that out, they lead to the Serpent's Temple, which is the kind of the culmination of this, this module. Everything on the island has been set up, like the, the villagers in the villa live here to protect this, this amulet from the lava serpent that lives inside the mountain that wants to make the, the mountain erupt, right? Um, and then this would be like the final boss map or they have to make their way down uh however they affect the environment will depend how the chase scene works on the way back out um yeah there's uh love rifling through things here let's see the villa <clears throat> So one of the things that the last thing I got to work on, which I started at the beginning of the stream, if you go back and look, is um, I'm going to do one large scale map of this entire island. And I'm going to scale most of the these assets down to a size that looks like a miniature model of them. Um, and it's almost going to be like a click and play image that can be like the HUD or the backdrop of the Dungeon Master and the players can point, choose, or quite literally mouse over on their dis on their owlbear and laser point the place they want to go and then the DM says, okay, we go to the villa map and open up the villa map. Uh, there's a villa, just outside the villa is the pirate ship. Um, mad props to the workshop. Uh, I was, I, through an at for them. I gotta go figure out their, their name. I'm blanking on it right now. But this pirate ship came out absolutely gorgeous based off their ship model. Only thing just right here, just like you gotta pan the camera just like to there so the edge is hidden. But other than that, absolutely gorgeous. was super pleased with what dungeon and the thing that I was worried about with the pirate ship was that I was going to have to import something or use other assets that don't look like dungeon alchemist. And I really like, especially in a module pack to have all the assets look the same and have the same vibe texture and feel.
for sure. There's multiple ways you could go about it. Um, depending on the thematics you want to go with. I think you got to add some, some more nettles like over here. Add some greenery just to add to accent this side. So the villa has a, a little cellar basement that leads to a secret door that leads to a tunnel that leads to here that also leads to this which all lead to the labyrinth so yeah it's really it's like it's more like the module is like is like everything you need to run this area there's no real instructions or like forced narratives we we kind of designed the module to be more open and free and just kind of feel your way around the island almost. If you've ever played um, uh, this 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 map will, will bring it home. If you've ever played Mist or any of the games uh, made by that company, um, it's kind of like the, the vibe that we were going for, like this eerie, explorative, um, not combat focused narrative that still has some light combat in it because D and D, you know. Um, super proud of this map down here with this and, and the, the cliff doing these little washouts with the crumbling uh, banisters like this is all trick of the eye right like it's really not that far down I couldn't get it as far as I wanted but you do this and it looks like it's way down there <laughs> Yeah, so that's kind of like the vibe we've been going for. And then this is this is really cool, so check this out. Um, we have these four switches in like this electric box that, as you know, these all turn on. If I can get them to. I think you have to move them. Or I might have my animations off. But anyways... Um, you know, you know what the arc, our lightning arcs look like, Mac. <laughs> so essentially, I, I'm I'm gonna design a circle of arcs, and I think to get it perfect, I might have to just do some Photoshop and drop an image over my map, which is fine. But I'll still use the the in-house lightning arc uh, as the basis for that. Um, but essentially, when the players complete this puzzle, they create a circle of lightning arcs around this uh this uh, uh telescope observatory can't think of the name of the word it's a telescope right so many mixed memories yeah my only memories of that game was i was too young to play it didn't understand anything and played it way too long because i was like i will figure this out and never did <laughs> uh and this over here and you might have saw it on the the grand entrance map which is just down this road here at the top of the mountain right is a little mudslide uh, and the mudslide leads to my favorite part of the island, which is the backside, the, the forgotten jungle, where we have a corpse flower. Oh gosh, that sounds almost like scary, like a horror game in VR. Uh, but this is my corpse flower map, which came out really cool, I think, with the, with the Venus flytrap piranha plant here animated. It's not exactly what a corpse flower looks like, but we're doing our best with what we got. You know how it is. I even was able to throw some bones inside its, its maw a bit, and some of the ones that don't move. Yeah, so a bunch of little fun little secrets. Plenty, plenty of things to explore. Um, it's been definitely been a goal of mine to create a, a full module pack. Like I like making maps, but I want to make a complete thing. It's just like something that I've been wanting to do. So I've done one shots, which are short, and one map. But I want to I want to do a collection of maps and, and combine them in in some type of game format. Um, so I've been really trying to finish that idea and get a project onto my Patreon. Um, but I've done some other stuff. I've been doing just like some basic stuff that I've, I have some plans for a new type of like direction for map making stuff that's smaller, quicker, utilizes a bit more of the, the functions of Dungeon Alchemist that are given. Um, so what's, what would be a quick example of that? Go here. So I've just been doing like this road collection. 
and pretty much every map of these look the same but they're just cute little 20 by 20 are they 20 yeah 20 by 20 straight roads um and there's one in desert there's one in swamp there's one in meadow there's one in rocky mountain etc 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 as many biomes as i could literally make i made this straight road in the same exact position so then the next thing i will do is take this map and start editing it to be a curved road right and we'll say now we have a desert curve road now we have a forest curve road now we have a mountain curve road and essentially it's just like one big road package um so what player uh, dms could do is take one two three of these road road maps four or five depending on how long your your adventure is piece them together however you like random encounters wherever you like and then at the end of this i'll make a campsite on each one of these biomes so that then the dm can say hey i'm in the desert and we need to do a travel to here one two three campsite i have three uh, the, all the battle maps i need for tonight's session um and and as like i said as many biomes as i can kind of can accomplish is the goal so yeah those are the projects i've kind of been working on actively i've been I've, i'm trying to find an on the books job so i've been slowing down a little bit thank you appreciate that um but the community's growing here on on Twitch. I got a lot of followers, and a lot of lurkers. I love my lurkers. Um, we're getting new ones every day, so I appreciate everybody that comes and and, and checks out what I do. Um, and yeah, yeah, a lot of stuff on Patreon and stuff. If anybody needs any any maps or such, take a look. Uh, I'm very excited because I have not done a damn submission yet at all. So I'm waiting for the patch so that I can do the damn submission, and I'm I'm curious to see what I will make with with the new stuff. So, um, that will be probably my next stream. Once once we have the the magic update, I'll probably be streaming my damn submission uh, shortly thereafter. So, take it easy, everybody. Take care. It's always a pleasure. I'm gonna go get some lunch.